Integrating contemporary science into the core curriculum of Tibetan monasteries has been part of His Holiness the Dalai Lama's long-standing vision for a convergence of science and spirituality to benefit humanity. The Robert A. Paul Emory Tibet Science Initiative began in 2006 when His Holiness the Dalai Lama invited Emory University to collaborate with the Library of Tibetan Works and Archives to develop a comprehensive and sustainable science education program for Tibetan nunneries and monasteries. To make His Holiness's visionary proposition a reality, EDSI has developed and implemented a comprehensive curriculum that spans multiple scientific disciplines across six years of study, and that includes a year of philosophy of science. To expand and deepen monastic scholars' research training, EDSI has been collaborating with Northwestern University to offer a two-month research internship program at Northwestern University since fall 2022. To introduce you the conception, implementation, and impact of the Emory Tibet Science Initiative, we have with us Dr. Nicole Girardo from Emory University and Dr. Robin Nuslock from Northwestern University. They are ETSI research unit leaders leading the ETSI winter research training since 2021. Uh, welcome both of you on our program. Nice to meet you. Wonderful to be here. Right. Um, so I think it is really interesting for me to read that um, a selected group of monks and nuns are actually carrying out um, scientific research. I would have never thought this to be possible like 10, 15 years ago. Um, in fact, not many Tibetans would have considered this a possibility. Um, but however, with His Holiness's um, collaboration with scientists and his constant encouragement um, for the monastic communities to learn and uh, do science made this uh, possible, I think. So um, Dr. Girardo, um, would you please describe EDSI's research program and, and what was the process of its development? So the Really, the idea behind the research program is that science is about doing science, and that's how you learn it, and that's how we can sort of advance sort of the, the um, conversation between science and Buddhism. So it was really developed um, in part by monastics for many years have been coming to Emory University, and so that's given um, sort of a long-term perspective on their understanding. Um, they've been taking lab classes, um, and we saw sort of this vision of slowly developing sort of a research skills project that could turn into the monastics doing research projects where they define the question. Um, and so we've been sort of working on that collaboratively for the last four years. And it's been amazing the progress that we've made so quickly. Right. Um, so His Holiness the Dalai Lama has um, often called for the convergence of uh, science and spirituality for the uh, benefit of humanity. Um, Dr. Naslok, why do you think that is so important? Um, and also, how does uh, monastic engaging in research studies um, help promote this convergence? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, science and Buddhism really share a investigative curiosity about the nature of mind, about the nature of reality. Um, and they take at times different methods. So science often might take more of a third person perspective focused on kind of, you know, standard scientific observation. And uh, Buddhism takes this wonderful first-person investigation approach um, based on the observation of one's own mind and nature of reality. And the confluence of those two paths can be quite magical in terms of addressing some of the larger questions in our world and in our society um, and yield new questions that perhaps one you know, group might not think of by themselves and really generate this cross-cultural conversation. The other point I would say is, is that I, you know, I, I frequently say that science needs Buddhism more perhaps than Buddhism needs science because of the ethical framework that Buddhism offers to the world of compassion. And so I think science has so much to learn and glean from this conversation uh, with our dear colleagues. Right. Um, so Dr. Girardo, uh, you and Dr. Nurslok were instrumental in developing the research program. Uh, I want to know what were your biggest uh, challenges and what sort of research studies are the monastics um, undertaking at the moment? I think the biggest challenges come with uh, many of the challenges you face when teaching and designing a new class that you don't know exactly what's going to work and what's not. Um, this was all very new. Um, of course, our other challenge is that the first year of the research, this research training program was during COVID. Um, and so actually our first time together with the monastics for the research program um, was remote. So we were still in the United States and they were together in India. Um, but we've taken a team approach to that. And so 
Um, they've really helped each other. We've had lay Tibetan scientists who have been working very closely with them. And so they've developed a number of projects based on their own interests. Some of those are thinking about um, cognitive neuroscience, which is sort of the study of the brain and, and understanding um, in particular sort of particular um, meditation practices and how they change brain activity. Um, and those have been completely guided by the monastics own understanding of meditation and different practices within their tradition. Um, they've also been very interested in public health and public health of the monastic community, looking at memory and aging, trying to understand um, uh, other health metrics in the monastic community and what we can do maybe to make um, the monastic community healthier in the end. Uh, so you've said they are more interested, um, I mean, they have shown interest in um, healthcare field. So uh, are they able to come up with um, initiatives of their own? Yeah, so um, a couple of things that they've done that have been really facilitated by working with Tibetan doctors and physicians in the community. And so one um, example of a project was to take sort of a very traditional um, approach of fasting within the monastic community, but understanding how that could sort of promote metrics of health. Um, and so they designed it. They designed it based on sort of the sort of the tradition of fasting. Um, they had a beautiful scientific design where you actually want to understand sort of measures of health in the population before they did the fasting intervention and then afterwards. Um, and they saw things, um, for example, like weight loss, but also sort of other measures of just like a more vibrant, healthy person um, in the fasting group. So that was very much designed by them. Um, and their goal is to then communicate that science. So science is only powerful if you communicate it to others and sort of to say, hey, in our community, we have this tradition and it actually has really important health benefits that we should consider. Right. Um, so in this whole area of uh, convergence uh, between science and spirituality, uh, Dr. Nurslaug, what do you think is the role of ETSI's research program? Um, what is the vision uh, behind ETSI's research program? Oh, ETSI's research program is um, is 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 the heart of of this conversation, I would say, um, and it really started with a magical moment between His Holiness and Geshe Lopsang Tenzinnegi at uh, Emory University, who uh, is is the leader of the Emory Tibet Science Initiative with his wonderful um, of team at Emory University, and this really set the foundation for an organized and structured. Um, education program for the Tibetan monastics in, living in India. That's the first change to the Tibetan monastic curriculum in 600 years. So it's really a remarkable kind of historical moment. Um, and this uh, conversation initiated this very organized, well-structured training program. So the first six years involves, uh, you know, classwork and establishing the foundation of science and kind of understanding of science. Um, it's called the implementation phase. Then there's the sustainability phase, which my uh, colleague, Dr. Gerardo, and I just recently uh, led it at, in India, which is about learning how to do research, as, as was mentioned, um, and learning science by doing science and really participating in research and generating research ideas. And then the next phase will be a specialization phase where uh, our monastic colleagues and, and friends can start to really dive deeper into the methods of their choice and the approaches of their choice and personalize their interest to their 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 own kind of interest in science. So um, ETSI has is a is a remarkable uh, leader um, and foundation of this conversation. And Geshe Lopsung, who uh, is really implemented this, has done a, kind of a historic event in making this in, in implementing His Holiness's vision for this conversation between science and Buddhism. Um, so, rightly as Dr. Nurslok said, we're seeing. Um, a change in the Buddhism studies after 600 years. Um, one of the key skills that cultivated uh, through this program is the science leadership and the new initiative called uh, the Tenzin Gyasu Science Leadership Association. Dr. Jurado, um, can you briefly introduce us the Tenzin Gyasu Science Scholar Program? So the Tenzin Gyasu Science Scholar Program is a program where um, a select group of monastics come to Emory University. They have a two-year curriculum that involves a combination of taking classes with Emory undergraduates, 
um, in the biological sciences, in physics, actually getting to do lab classes. Um, a group of undergraduate students at Emory University started a peer mentoring program to really work with them carefully. Um, the Tins and Getzel scholars also have sort of very um, a rigorous sort of training in English. So these scholars sort of leave Emory with having an opportunity to really get um, sort of more advanced uh, depth and knowledge in some of the sciences and often leave with a sense of, you know, what I really love is physics or what I really love is biology. Um, and they come back to the community sort of eager to take that training um, and benefit sort of the community as a whole. So they've come together and formed a group in which they are organizing sort of public outreach events where they'll have um, lectures in the evenings, or they will use sort of the monastic tradition of debate to debate sort of topics related to uh, the net, to the sciences. Um, and I think that that um, shows how the Emory Tibet Science Initiative has set a foundation that will um, be sustainable and build from years to come. Right. Um, so my last question is um, for the both of you. Um, tell us briefly about um, the impact of the Emory Tibet Science Initiative. I know you have spoken about this a little bit already. Um, how do you see this program fulfilling His Holiness the Dalai Lama's um, long-standing vision for a convergence of science and spirituality? Um, and also, what do you hope uh, the monastic scientists will gain from participating in the um, EDSI research internship at Northwestern University? His Holiness talks about a hundred year project, and I think that's a, a nice frame to recognize that this is a, a conversation that I hope will go on for, for many, many years. Um, and uh, uh, my hope is, is that this convergence between science and Buddhism uh, yields um, creative conversations and collaborations about mind, about matter, about the nature of reality, about health and well-being. Um, so for the for you know what Buddhist and, and and monastics may glean from this conversation, I hope is an appreciation of of science and and the tools to investigate questions that they might have um, using scientific methods and combine those with the first person investigation methods of Buddhism in a way that could be really profound and could be very insightful and in kind of a new frontier of investigating these questions. I hope science and scientists glean the compassion and ethical framework. That Buddhism provides, and you know, unique ways of investigating the, the nature of mind and 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 health through uh, these these ancient traditions. And there's a lot of suffering in the world, and I think we need that ethical and that that perspective at this point in time. The goal of the Northwestern internship was to provide an opportunity for a smaller group of people to go deeper. Um, and have an experiential kind of immersion program uh, by really coming to Northwestern and, and living um, in our community and really becoming a part of our community and uh, having the opportunity to learn certain skills in more depth, having the opportunity to um, kind of experience what it's like to do research in a laboratory. Um, and so that was a wonderful component of the training program. We hope that that continues in the future. Um, and again, it's all about really fulfilling his Holiness's vision of this conversation and collaboration between science and Buddhism to tackle uh, some of the more complex questions in our in our world. Uh, would you like to add something to this? I think that His Holiness started this dialogue or this conversation between science and spirituality um, really at a very young age. That's sort of who he who he was and who he is, um, and it started by academic scientists and. Buddhist scholars coming together. What I love about um, the Emory Tibet Science Initiative and really this phase of the monastics starting to do scientific research um, is that going forward, I think central to that conversation will be monastic scientists. That they have, they have training in both, they have vision in both, um, and they really love both the way His Holiness does. And so they will be central to it. And that allows me to see that this is going to move forward a hundred years and beyond. And I really do think that it can change our understanding of both science um, and Buddhism. Right. Um, so one more question. Uh, 
Dr. Gerardo, as you said, um, you hope to bring a monastic scientist in the future. Do you, uh, with what you have seen so far, do you, do you guys see that happening um, in the times to come? And what impact do you think that that is going to create um, to the world at large? Yes, absolutely. So um, when we started this phase of the research training program, I don't think either Robin or I would have envisioned that three or four years later, we would be where we are today. Um, the monastic sciences have fully engaged with their research projects, despite the fact that they also have a rigorous sort of um, schedule for their Buddhist studies and for contributing to their community in other ways. And they have developed projects that I think um, are just beautiful scientific studies, thinking about how do you want to do this science so you can really ask a question and make sure that the data would answer those questions. And so that tool set, um, they are eager to move forward. And I think they also have the skills to then train others and to sort of build up the sort of community of monastic scientists. Dr. Nuslag, would you like to add anything to that? Yeah, I would. Um, you know, just I think one wonderful example of this is uh, last May, we uh, held the first ever, the monastic our monastic science colleagues held their first ever um, Tibetan Monastic Science Research Conference at His Holiness's Monastery in Dharmasala. And it was really a remarkable moment in which they presented their research uh, to uh, the community um, and to His Holiness's community. Um, and these were questions that they developed, they implemented with support from ETSI faculty, but it was really them implementing that. And it was such a remarkable moment. I remember Nicole and I standing there saying, just like kind of in awe of, of, of what's happened. And I think what's particularly exciting is how quickly it happened. I mean, you know, there's there's it's a hundred year project and we're in, in year four. And so, you know, we have we have a lot of ways to go and a lot of uh things ahead of us. But um it 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 just highlights the fact that this conversation and this collaboration is really primed to take off in a really exciting way. And now we have uh, this year our dear monastic science colleagues writing papers, which we hope to publish in the first ever ETSI research journal this coming year. Um, and uh, some of these papers may be published in, in scientific papers around the world or scientific journals around the world. So um, I think we're both really excited and surprised and also in, in, in awe of how quickly this is, is occurring and um, how excited we are for the future. Right. Um... So we have come to the end of our discussion. Um, Dr. Gerardo and Dr. Neslock, thank you so much for being here with us virtually. But more importantly, thank you for your um, invaluable time and contribution to making uh, His Holiness's vision to life. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, the, the Robert A. Paul Emery Tibet Science Initiative is one of the three programs that are at the intersection of science and spirituality. These programs are supported by robust research components as the Emory Compassion Center works to advance the global culture of compassion under Emory Tibet Partnership, a collaboration with His Holiness the Dalai Lama that dates back to 1998. Thank you for watching this episode of Compassion Revolution series.